Okay, uh, well, I got to tell you this story. It's a CNC story. I know out there a lot of you guys know that I'm not a real major advocate of CNC for, I want to make this perfectly clear, for live steam work. Um, some guys think, non-machinist guys, they weren't trained, they think they can go out and buy one of these machines and then program it, which they're perfectly capable of doing, a G-code, and they're going to push some button and it's going to put out the stuff. Well, that may be true, but what I found out, sincerely found out, is that I personally do not like the machines because I can't feel the machine working. I push a cycle start, push the button, it goes by itself. And I don't know if I can make them any more or less accurate with the CNC than I can with a machine like this. Now this machine here is what's called a Harnage, H-A-R-D-I-N-G-E, chucker, better known as a chucker, H-C slash a T. Harnage chucker slash with automatic threading. That's this unit up on top here and this handle right here. And there's chasers, and I'll show you those in a second. I'll get one out. Um, thread chasers. And here's one here. There. I'll come up and show you. They're hardened. And this is the the chaser follower it's called, which is, this one happens to be a 12 thread, and it, they fit together like this, and this goes on here, this piece, brass piece, mounts to here, and when you're ready to thread, you just pull this down, you engage, get ready to engage the thread, it won't engage until you push the button, you push the button back here, and it engages this, and follows it and it hits a little uh, electric solenoid over here, it opens up the air and a spring knocks it back up, away from the thread. So it goes up, it'll go, it'll go in, up, and over. I should go this backwards. Go in, that, go in, up, and over. There. Okay, go in, up, and over, all right? And then it just continue to do that. Also, you can do um, internal threads. Same thing. And it, it feeds down automatically, there's a little ratchet in here, until you so, so tell it to stop, and it stops automatically, and the machine just stops, comes back and stops outside the part. And then, you know, you pull that out of the way, you do the next operation. So you can do, uh, I got one, three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen, eighteen to twenty different threads. I mean, they range in size from, they have an, a, tw a 10 I don't have, I'll get if I need it, 10, 3 quarter 10, or some 10 thread, I don't really cut that, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, 27, which I, I don't know if you can cut a taper, 28, 32, 36, 40, 48, 56, 64 threads per inch, and this is 72 threads and I think 80 threads. And so it'll do all those threads. And um, the machine is pretty accurate. They, they claim that these machines are, when new, two and a half tenths run out. And I checked this with an with a indicator, a pretty good indicator, but with just a piece of stock in here. And it was running out about half a thousandths with just an ordinary piece of, I think it was drill rod I put in there. And um, when you're running the machine, it indexes to the different tools. And you set it up, not like just if you would a um, CNC machine, you set it up the same way. Now, I had the CNC lathe right here. It was at M. Co. Meyer. Uh, I bought it from someone, a friend, who was a live steamer, and I ran it at his place. It ran beautifully. I had no problems with it. But when we came to here in New Jersey, at this location, 
I have 208 power. Now, okay, you're going to tell me, you need a buck boost, you need a buck, bitty, bop, bitty, boop. I went through all of that. I went through all of that. Forget it. It will not run on 208 fluctuating power. We have 208, one second. The next second is 199. It's too low. Electronics, it just don't want to run. And it kicks out. I have in the other room, I have a, a VFD, a variable frequency drive, on my mill. That somebody told me you should have one of these. Well, I had it hooked up to three phase before that, a three phase converter. I have a 10 horsepower converter. And that runs fine. It fluctuates, yeah, but you don't notice it. But with that VFD, I'll be running the mill and it'll drop 50 RPMs on me. And we have in the street, we have 208 power. It's in the street. It's down in the ground, out in the street. And we have restaurants down the street here that are high demand on three phase power for their compressors, for their refrigeration. And on the weekend, it's not bad because the restaurants aren't really. They're more, they're there, but they don't have as much traffic and whatnot as they do during the week because we have the, the courthouses up the street here and the Superior Court for New Jersey is over there and the county courts here and we have a lot of people in this area. So it's, the, the restaurants are busy. But anyway, I got this, I, I just, after two years of fooling around with it, trying to convert it to mock, and it, and it can be converted. My friend Pete, will, I sold the machine to him he will get it running. I have every confidence in the world that Peter will get it running. I didn't have the time to spend to get it to work. It took us six months just to get the spindle to run. He helped me tremendously. I made a new control. We converted it, a lot of it to Mach 3. Got rid of all that 25-year-old technology. And we're going to run it on Mach 3, which is a good, good system. Now. I had an opportunity to get this machine. It was in New Jersey, number one. So I had to go too far to get it. I was on the internet. I got it off the eBay, but I bought it directly from the guy, not through eBay, because he had a, has a website. So legitimately, I was able to buy it. And the other attraction was that it had a automatic threading attachment. A lot of them don't have them. A lot of the machinery guys take these threading attachments off because they're about fifteen hundred dollars used. They, I don't know what they cost new. But it all had that on there. Had some tooling with it. Usually they take this stuff off. And um, no, just a few collets. Uh, got some collets. Just a few. But I've got a complete set of hardage collets. Not, they're, they're 5C hardage collets. And I've got the um, dead length. I've got three different dead length collets. I've got the soft jaw collets. Um, and I've got some larger ones, so uh, I'm pretty well tooled up with collets. Uh, the machine, I've been running it now making, this is the gauge glass. They come up close. It's the gauge glass, guys. They're coming. This is uh, Wednesday. By the end of the week, I should have them all set up, ready to go and ship. It's a gauge glass. This is one I did, the original one. It's got a glass in it. And all right, you might say, well, it's got the square top on. But if you don't want to see that, you turn it upside down that way. No biggie. The only thing different I made on this one versus this one, I don't know if you can see it, is I eliminated the four screws on the top and bottom because those screws would break into this area here and break into, uh, into the areas where I didn't want them to, to. If I put them here, I didn't have any problem on the bottom. I put them on the bottom, I had no problem. But on the top, they'd break into the top here, and I don't want that. So I eliminated them up. But what I'm doing here on this lathe is making these little top pieces. And this is um, the top. And the O-ring fits in there, just fits in there. It's a flat O-ring, by the way, square one. And that goes in there. And then, of course, I'll tap these, uh, the hole. And four holes, i got to make up a fixture for the four holes to, to hold it down and counterbore them so that the 440 stainless steel screws go in and squash the O-ring. And uh, I've got to make up 40 of them. Now, one of the reasons why 
they were delayed uh, in getting them out was two reasons. One, I had to cut the glass, if you recall, and we're going to do that a little later this afternoon while I got the video camera set up. I'm going to do show how I cut the glass and everything. Two is that I, I, I originally, I've got 80 castings. I said, well, I'll do 20. And I started with 20, sold the 20, and I had no stock. So I said, well, if I'm going to set up. I'm just going to do it. So I went up to 40, and I've got uh, probably 10 of those. I, I've, saw, I've sold about 30, 30 of them from the original 40 that I made. So uh, I have some in stock. And uh, it was a matter of getting the tooling together and some other things. The, the Burgermaster had to be done. I had to get rid of the CNC lathe and bring this one in, clean it good, paint it. Uh, it wasn't really hard to hook up. We have the three phases already here for when I tried to use it on the CNC. I have a 220 line there as well. I had the air all here. So it was a pretty much of a natural. Now, back here in the back, this tube you see way back here, that and then these stands here are a bar feeder that I got additional, not with the lathe, but I additionally from another guy. And that goes on the end here, right in the end here. And it works off air. There's a, I have a little lever. You, you open the collet, you hit this button, it comes out against the stop. You close the collet and run off the air. And then that, that's automatic bar feeder. Now you can put a six foot bar, that's fine. No, you don't need to have any long lengths. You're, not, you're making small pieces, so why do you need a longer piece of that? And it works out just right. I just set it up here when I need it, and when I don't need it, I just store it somewhere up on the rack or so on. Okay, well, uh, the thing to do now would be to reposition the camera, and then I'm going to get this thing actually working. Okay?